my topic is top 10 issues in Apache Cloud Stack, or top 10 network issues to be specific. Um, my name is Kirk Kuczynski. I'm an escalation engineer at Citrix Systems. Uh, previously was working for cloud.com as support engineer. So yeah, I've been working on Cloud Stack support for about uh, two years, a little bit more than two years now. And so I've seen a lot of it, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of the network issues. I've seen, I think, I don't know if I've seen it all, but uh, any, anything that anybody ever report to uh, you know, the support team, then we've seen it. And so this is basically, a, a, just talk, this talk's just gonna go over the you know, top 10 issues, in my opinion. You know, maybe uh, you guys don't believe me if these are top 10, that's okay. Uh, but these are my, my personal opinion on the top 10. And so uh, let's go. So the agenda, basically I already did the uh, introduction and then we're just gonna get right into the top 10 network issues. And I put Q&A at the end, probably not gonna have time. But uh, you know, if there's time left, we could do a Q&A at, at the end. And then also, if you have a specific question while I'm going over one of the issues, it might be, might be easier just to raise your hand and get done with uh, while I'm on that particular issue. Because you know, if, you, if you wait like three issues and then say, hey, that issue three issues ago, can you go back to there? You know, we're not gonna have time. So, um, so yeah, maybe just shoot your, shoot your hand up and, and uh, have a system basically, if, uh, if I'm gonna cover it later, I'm gonna tell you that and I'm gonna give you a strike and then street strikes, you can't ask any more questions. So, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. You can ask as many questions as you want, but uh, you know, just to, you know, be patient. If, I'm, if I tell you, you know, we might get to it. So, with, uh, with that, let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, I guess there's any questions yet? No, okay. <laughs> all right, so first issue that uh, is uh, that we see basically all the time is VLAN issues. It's such a big issue that I actually split it up into two of the top 10, it's gonna be VLAN related. There's just so many VLAN related issues that, uh, that you know, it can't, it, you know, it could have top 10 VLAN issues basically. So, but I tried to like give you two, cut it, you know, only 20% of the issues are gonna be VLANs, so. So the number one most common issue is the switch misconfiguration. That would be the switches that the hypervisor is actually talking to. Now, obviously, if you're not using VLANs, if, if you're using like a basic zone, then uh, you know, you're not gonna be using VLANs, then you might not see these issues at all. But uh, for advanced zone, probably what most uh, CloudStack users are, uh, are using, they'll be using VLANs in the advanced zone. And uh, you know, those hypervisors have to be connected to, to some kind of switches, right? And so those switches, just, it's so easy to, to configure them wrong. And so the, the, the symptoms you normally see, the number one symptom that we, we, we will see is uh, DHCP just not uh, working for the certain number of the VMs, right? You know, some of the VMs will boot up and they'll work fine to get DHCP, and you know, some of them won't. And well, if, you, if you're familiar with CloudStack, you know that uh, CloudStack by default manages the DHCP for the, the, the VMs, right? So basically CloudStack has a little virtual appliance running a DHCP server, and uh, giving out uh, DHCP addresses, right? So the, uh, so the, the symptom is that the, the VMs, some of them won't be able to get that DHCP from those, and some of the VMs will work. And you know, the, 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 if you look into a little bit deeper, then the, 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 the reason that, or I guess the, the more detail that you would notice would be that the VMs running on the same host as the DHCP server get DHCP, but the VMs on other hosts don't get DHCP. And well, this is the classic, classic example of the switch is wrong. The switch configuration is wrong. Somewhere those VLAN, the VLAN that the, the customer instance or the, the actual VM is in, on is uh, somehow not making it all the way over to the other host where the, the DHCP server is, right? It's on the same VLAN, but uh, you know, maybe the, uh, the, you know, there's something wrong with switch configuration, right? So, uh, how, how would you detect this? Well, you kind of just uh, use, normally I would use like TCP dump if you, if you can, depending on the hypervisor, right? If you can use TCP dump, then you can kind of just uh, run TCP dump on different interfaces or sub-interfaces or virtual interfaces on a hypervisor level, and you can find exactly where that uh, traffic's being dropped or where the uh, VLAN tag's being lost. And uh, you know, from there, you can kind of figure out like where, where the switch uh, or where that VLAN is just getting messed up. Uh, you know, so you can use TCP dump on Zen server in bridge mode or KVM. Uh, for ESXi, there's not really TCP dump VMware ESXi, so um, 
you wouldn't use TC dump there. And same for Zen server with open vSwitch mode. That's kind of the new default on the newer Zen servers, or Zen cloud platform, I should say also. So you, know, you can still use TC dump on the Zen server with the open vSwitch, but it doesn't work very well in my experience. So in those cases, I don't really have a good solution. Maybe you can use like uh, just some testing VMs. You can, uh, if you don't have access to the actual end user VMs that uh, to run TCP dump on, you can just set up a, like a test VM on that same network and then uh, run TCP dump there. You know, it's not not the best solution, but you know we don't don't really see this too often where you have to actually really troubleshoot the OpenV switch uh, environment or ES6i with the networking problems. Uh, besides that, you can also look at uh, like the ARP cache on the on the, on the MAC address table on the switch to see you know if uh, you know I guess where the where the VM MAC is or isn't you know might not maybe it's in the wrong VLAN for example or or uh, or you know not not showing up at all on the switch well that'll be bad uh, you know one of the common problems or one of the common reasons the switch misconfiguration the switch is misconfigured. Does this VLAN trunks are is it trunked by default or not? Right. Some switches will uh, basically default to to if you put a if you put a tr if you put a switch port into trunk mode, it will just allow all VLANs by default unless you specifically deny some. And then some switches are the opposite. They will specifically deny all VLANs unless you specifically allow them. And so maybe like the network team is getting new switches and. A different vendor or a different model of the same vendor. It's a different uh, type of configuration. You know, that's, uh, that's going to be there up to them to. They need to really uh, make sure the switch ports are uh, you know, configured right. Another problem is just that there's so many switch ports. I mean, if you have a big cloud, you might have you know, thousands of hosts, right, and connected to thousands of switch ports, and you know, and, you know, ten or hundreds of switches maybe. And so, well, you know, you're going to have to make sure every single switch port is configured right. And if it's not, well, this is can be problems. Uh, so yeah, the solution would be to obviously check the switch configuration. You know, after you, after you narrow it down to try to figure out, you know, where that VLAN is getting, uh, you know, mangled or lost, or or the the VLAN traffic is being dropped, uh, you just have to fix the switch configuration or you know, buy new switches or hire a new network admin or whatever, whatever uh, you can do to get that switch configured right. Uh, Right, yeah, and I mean, there's just, there's just so many ways it can go. I mean, besides the switch ports that the hypervisors are connected to, uh, the, the, the switch ports between the switches have to be configured right. So maybe every switch port for the hypervisors is good, right? But then as soon as it's leaving that switch to go to another switch to get to somewhere else in your network or to some other hypervisors that's connected to a different switch, then you know, that traffic might be wrong, right? You might have, you know, again, VLANs denied by default or allowed, maybe not allowed specifically, or they're uh, you know, accidentally denied or something like that. Or of course, you know, if the ports are not in trunk mode, that'll be a big problem because uh, you generally need the, 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 the ports in trunk mode to pass any VLANs. Uh, some switches in access mode can pass like a couple VLANs or something before like voice traffic, but, but generally if you're using VLANs in a cloud or a virtualization environment, you need to enable those uh, switch ports to have uh, to be in trunk mode and allow the right, uh, right uh, VLANs. Uh, other network problems, you know, it could be uh, firewalls. Like you have uh, you know, some firewall, like maybe you know, your VLAN, VMs can't get out of your virtualization environment or can't get to their data center or something like that. So you know, have to check the firewalls. It might be might you might have just like a simple layer, you know, three firewall blocking an IP address, so you can't ping or Nothing is going through to a certain destination. That's easy. You just ping or Telnet or uh, Nmap or something, or just use like a web browser from your VMs to you know, figure out that the fire some some firewall is blocking it. Uh, you might have like a layer four firewall, so it's allowing certain ports or denying certain ports. So some ports might work, some some won't. Um, then you get into like application layer firewalls. That's when you really start getting the really crazy problems. So like, ping will work, and then you can get to port 22, for example. But then SSH will fail, right? That's I've seen that before, and it's not not fun to troubleshoot. It's just a, it's just a very weird. Uh, these application layer firewalls are really powerful, but troubleshooting them is kind of weird. So so yeah, I mean you might might have a case. You know, 
like they're blocking encryption or something, then SSH or HTTPS might be blocked. Even you can get to the port. Uh, I've seen that, it's very weird. Another type of network problem would be using load balancer in the environment. Uh, now the cloud stack has a load balancer feature, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about actually like the load balancer in your in your network, basically. Like a, you might just have like some Linux machine or like a you know like a F5 or or a Netscaler or something like that doing load balancing. Now for for admin, the admin or at the, like the cloud stack uh, environment level, uh, there's two main reasons you use a load balancer. One of them would be for load balancing like the API or the UI for the end users. So there would be you'd have your load balancer in front of like a cluster of cloud stack servers and uh, they you know end users would connect to that load balancer and the load balancer would you know load balance the uh, the connection to the management servers right and so if that's configured wrong then you know the end users might have some kind of weird problems like uh, you know like if the load balancer is not configured for persistence on the right ports then uh, you know they might uh, get like uh, permissions or, or like it might be getting logged out randomly or something like that. Um, don't see too many problems with that, but uh, you know, it can happen. Um, and then the other reason you'd use a load balancer in cloud stack environment would be actually to load balance uh, the, like the internal communications between the system VMs and the cloud stack management server, right? So if you're familiar with cloud stack, you might have, uh, you might have a cluster of them and you might notice that uh, all the system VMs by default are going to be talking to only one of the management servers. So if you have a lot of system VMs, then one of those servers might be extra busy handling all those system VM connections. And you can get, you can you can load balance that. You can there's a host parameter in global settings that would uh, change the uh, uh, the IP that the system VMs are connecting to, right? So you could uh, set up a load balancer on that IP and then configure the load balancer to Basically, load balance the uh, connections to the management server, the the uh, like the port 8250 that the system VMs are connecting to, and so if that's configured wrong, there will be problems. And I guess the uh, the I don't know what the symptoms will be. I guess you would probably see some kind of errors in the log about system VMs can't talk to management server or something like that. Or if you check, if you connect to the system VMs directly, log in to the system VM, then maybe you can't reach port 8250 on the management server or Maybe what you would probably you would probably what you would probably see, you wouldn't be able to connect to port 8250 on load balancer, or maybe you could and there was some kind of problem. But then maybe if you change, connect to port 8250 on the uh, directly to one of the management servers, then it works. Well, then that, that clearly points to load balancer has a problem. So yeah, make sure just your load balancer is configured right. If you're using any, oh, I'm going to sleep. That's great. All right. Okay. So good to. VLAN issues number two. All right, so the the next category, I guess, of VLAN issues is more like with the hypervisors instead of the network environment. So, right, well, one of the problems is database hacking <laughs> can cause the VLAN problems, surprisingly. Uh, so stop that, you know, don't, don't mess with this guy, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, well, like, the example I can remember right now is that uh, if you, uh, like the one, there's an end user that wants to expand uh, the, or they want to use different VLANs than they originally configured when they were setting up CloudStack. So they're like, well, we can't edit this in the UI or API, so I'm just going to, yeah, I'll just change this, this, this one field and this one, this one uh, table. Well, <laughs> that's not a good idea. Uh, you can try it, but it's, it's uh, you know, gonna have problems if uh, if you're not if you're not like designing cloud stack, I guess. <laughs> if you're the developer of cloud stack, then you can probably figure it out. But but just, the problem is there's so many tables, right? So you change one table, and then oh, then now the UI says it's using these VLANs, so I'm good, right? Well, the UI might be getting the the VLANs from this one table, and that's just like a cosmetic information. It doesn't actually change anything. So. So yeah, you'd have to change like some other other tables as well. So yeah, stop it. Don't do that. Uh, but let me get to these other ones. Uh, the biggest one would be bonding. I'll get to that shortly. But one of the main ones though that can cause the VLAN problems is uh, uh, the uh, NIC drivers actually, if you can believe it. Uh, now uh, the NIC drivers, a lot of the NIC vendors, I'm not going to pick on any particular NIC vendor, but uh, 
Uh, the, I've seen a lot with Broadcom. Uh, basically, they're like saying, you know, oh, it works, you know, with your Linux server, physical machine is fine. But then, oh, wait a minute, you're going to use VLANs now? That's, that's different. Who uses VLANs? And then it stops working completely. <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that's actually happened. Uh, I've seen that mostly on Zen server, uh, but uh, probably have seen it before on KVM. Uh, and that's not to pick on KVM or Zen server, it's just most of the environments I look at are running KVM or Zen server. So most of the issues are just going to be there. And so, like, those the drivers are just the Linux drivers, and maybe the vendors just neglect them a little bit or just didn't test them that much. And, you know, like I said, like VLANs, it's just this crazy edge case, right? You're going to use VLANs? Who's the, who does that? So they don't test it, right? So then you got. So yeah, but the, the symptoms, unfortunately, is very similar to the to the uh, switch problems, switch configuration problems. It just maybe the, the traffic's going to be dropped somewhere else, like uh, maybe the traffic is not being received by the host at all, or maybe the, the host is uh, stripping the VLAN tag at the wrong place. So you you just use TCP dump probably to to uh, to just try to find where those traf where that VLAN traffic is being dropped, or uh, or yeah, basically where the where the VLAN tag is being stripped, and also you can look get the, get the help get the help from network team, or if you're the network team, then you can help yourself to like set up a spam part or something to see if the uh, the hypervisor is like sending the traffic at all. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, you know, but yeah, the symptoms will just be very similar. Like the, you have DHCP problems, or you you can't uh, communicate on the same VLAN across hosts. Uh, and it's, it's kind of troublesome because you're going to blame the network because it's usually the network, but it might be the NIC drivers. So, right, it's, uh, it's kind of annoying. But, but nowadays, it's getting kind of better. I uh, haven't seen it too much. So if you're using Zen server, try to use like, the newest version. Don't, you know, just download the newest version. Don't download one from two years ago. You know, it's it's uh, kind of, to me, it's common sense, but it's uh, not always what people are doing in the real world. Uh, and if you're downloading any Zen server version or KVM, just try to use the newest uh, version of the drivers. Uh, for KVM would be you know update the kernel pretty much, and for Zen server would be install the Zen server patches from Citrix. Uh, same goes for Zen Cloud Platform; uh, they provide patches, I guess, uh, that might have new drivers. And then there's also like driver specific patches. I know if you like go to Citrix website, there'll be you know if you go to like Zen server 6.0 and go to patches, then there'll probably be a bunch of Broadcom and Intel drivers, right? Um, so besides the NIC drivers, the really huge uh, cause of VLAN problems will be bonding, and especially on Zen server, but uh, you know, that's just where I've seen a lot of the problems with, with bonding on Zen server. Um, now bonding could be in its own category, probably, but, uh, but it's kind of overlapping with VLAN issues because it's, it's so often just uh, it's just just extremely commonly uh, uh, having problems with VLANs, right? With the with the bonding caused by bonding. So I mean, I could have separated it out, but then it's going to be mostly talking about VLANs. So I'm not sure if it should be separated out. So I just keep it into under VLANs because it kind of fits into these other categories with hypervisor problems. So with bonding, um, first of all, you would want to see where. Uh, like one of the one of the issues we'll see with Zen server would be uh, where the uh, sub interface is for like the, if you look at the VM. Are you have a question? Anybody? No. Okay, sorry. Okay, so if you, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and uh, keep them up so I can see them. Uh, so yeah, so with Zen server uh, with the bond, there'll be like a bond interface it's similar. If you're familiar with like uh, bonding on KVM or just Linux in general, it's basically like a virtual like bridge interface. Uh, same on same thing on Zen server, right? So the, uh, the using VLANs, they'll, those uh, those uh, they'll be like a sub interface, right? On to uh, have the VLAN tag traffic, uh, and it's supposed to be on the bridge, under the bridge, right? But sometimes we'll see the VLAN interface under one of the uh, slave NICs, right? One of those NICs that is uh, a member of the bond, and that's not supposed to happen ever, but it can happen, and like someone's gonna break down the door shortly. <laughs> Like really want to know what the top ten issues are. All right, so so yeah, with the check where the sub interface is and make sure it's on a, on the bond interface and not one of the sub interfaces. And it's kind of annoying because 
it will actually work most of the time when it's like that. It's just that the traffic is just on that sub on that NIC instead of on the bond. It's just that well, then the the, the person, the administrator says, well, you know the uh, the the uh, the the traffic. Uh, you know, I'm using bonding so I can like do maintenance or something, and then they bring down one of the switch parts or something, like upgrade firmware. I don't know why, but maybe like. Maybe they, maybe they have like a stack of switches and the, 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 the bump, each uh, NIC is going to a different uh, switch, right? So they, they reboot one of the switches and now the traffic's not working and they're crying because it's, uh, it's uh, well, I'm using bonding. Why, why, why my traffic is gone? Well, then if you look at it, then the, the, it's not actually, you're not actually using bonding. It's a bond, but the, the traffic's actually only using one of the NICs and not failing over. And this will be, basically be some kind of configuration problem on the, uh, on the hyper, on the on the Zen server, pretty much. You want to make sure that uh, basically there's a whole bunch of troubleshooting to do with the uh, bonding on Zen server. But uh, one of them is to make sure that when you set up the hosts, you follow the. There's actually cloud stack documentation to, uh, to to set up the bonding. So you want to make sure you follow that. There's a script you can use, right? Cloud stack provided script for configuring the bonding. And then also check the Zen server documentation. Make sure that uh, that it's configured right. Make sure that uh, the bonds are, you know, propagated to all the hosts and uh, and uh, just working properly. Uh, there's more. There's other testing you can do with bonding, like uh, like you can force failover. Like if you're using active passive, you can switch the active uh, uh, active NIC, uh, right? And uh, so. And they cause a change of bond mode. You know, one of the you know, nightmares we have is with the, the default mode of active-active using source load balancing or SLB bonding. It just doesn't work very well. Um, in some situations, so, you know, sometimes it works great, and the rest of the time it just doesn't work very well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can change change to active-passive. I like active-passive. It just it just works pretty uh, more reliably than SLB. Especially if you're using like multiple switches, and just if you want to plug like more your hypervisor into multiple switches, then just you need to uh, not use SLB ever. Um, and then actually, in Zenfire 6.1, they're supporting LACP, so that'll be good if like using stacked switches that support LACP, then you can you can actually do that with LACP. So yeah, so just to change the mode, change like the active NIC, you can force the failover. You can you can actually unplug a NIC physically, I guess, um, just to just to see you know where where that uh, problem is. But usually with VLANs, with the bonding, you'll see like the the VLAN is just on the wrong subinterface, or the subinterface is on the wrong NIC. You know, it should be on the bond basically. Uh, other issue we see with uh, yeah cabling, right? You know, um, sometimes the uh, administrator's vision of the cabling is different than the actual reality of the cabling. So maybe all the switch parts are configured right, but then you know someone needed to like unrack a server and the cable's too short, so they unplug them all and then they're like, well, they're all the same color. They should go the same. It doesn't matter where they go, right? Well, they plug this, plug the cables back into the wrong switch ports. You know, that, that happens, right? Or maybe you, yeah, that, yeah, just make sure the cabling's right with the with that because like maybe maybe the 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 hypervisor might be plugged into the uh, the uh, access ports or something. Even you have, even you have like maybe you're using like eight hypervisors with with eight 10 gig networks NICs, right? And then uh, your switch has 16, and you know they're just all mixed up, right? So, so just make sure it's actually plugged into the right thing, right? Um, other thing with the Zen server in particular, VLAN scalability uh, actually kind of fixed in Zen server 6.1 and XCP 6.1. Uh, but it used to be if you have like more than a few hundred VLANs configured on a hypervisor, just basically get really bad performance on the uh, like the boot up time and the uh, creating a new VLAN, right? So like you have a hundred VLANs on that hypervisor, and then you deploy a new VM and a new network, and it takes you know three hours to to make that next VLAN. Yeah, you know, I mean that's a big problem, but. Uh, but actually, that's fixed in XCP and Zen Server 6.1. Now I think they have, I think they're supporting like seven or eight hundred, something like that. 
It w it's, a, it's a big number now. So, so yeah, try to use the latest. I guess actually CloudSec 4.0 doesn't support Zen Source 6.1 yet, though. So uh, just wait till CloudSec 4.1. Um, right, and DB hacking, don't do, ha don't do the DB hacking, and uh, yeah, like you're besides, uh, yeah, for like solution-wise, you know, for NIC drivers, you change the NIC, you change the drivers, uh, bonding, you change, I kind of went over the solutions to fix the bonding, so just, just find the problems with the bonding and fix it. Cabling, you know, double check the cabling. VLAN scaling, you know, not that many solutions besides upgrade to Zen Server 6.1. Or use less of VMs or, v or VLANs. That's not good, I guess. And then uh, to fix your database hacking, just you know, I don't know. Just go back and undo it. Um, yeah, yeah. No, just the actual number of VLANs, like the VLAN count. It's a, uh, it's a. Uh, uh, basically, with with Zen Server, uh, once you start creating more networks on a pool, basically in Zen Server there's a concept of network, and that would be like a VLAN, right? It's a, it's a VLAN on one VLAN in your physical network, right? And that will be across all the hosts. Say you have eight hosts, right? So, but then Zen Server actually has a per host uh, uh, concept of a network called a VLAN if you're using VLANs, right? So the network you create a network on VLAN 100 in your Zen server pool, and then uh, then Zen server will, by default, will create eight VLANs, you know, one per hypervisor host, right? And as those VLANs get created, the hypervisor gets slower and slower. That's basically it. It's nothing about like the VM performance. Of course, it will affect the VM performance because uh, you know once you have like a few hundred VM VLANs, the hypervisor just gets so bogged down with stuff just dealing with those VLANs then it just uh, it just uh, just stops working basically I mean and it, it's not just per host I forgot to mention that it's also per pool so like the limitations so like per host you don't want to have too many per host too many VLANs per host and the same for uh, per pool because those VLANs they're existing per host and they're created like actually like a sub interface on the host but they're actually stored in the pool wide database it's like the state.db and so like if you have like 100 VLANs and eight hosts, then you have 800 VLANs in a whole uh, pool, right? And that can just blow up the pool, basically. It's, just, it's not pretty. Basically, the, it's not uh, uh, the Zen Server 6.02, 6.02 and prior is not uh, designed for having a lot of VLANs. It's more like designed for enterprise use or enterprise use cases where, you know, you might use VLANs, but I mean, you're not using a thousand VLANs, right? You might have like a few hundred or maybe like <coughs> 50 or something, right? Um, and definitely doesn't work for a service provider when you have like, if you have a thousand customers, they all want their own VLAN because they don't want to, you know, they don't want their VMs to be affected by other uh, other customers, right? So yeah, I mean, it doesn't scale very well there. But yeah, Zenserver 6.1 really just really fixes this basically. I mean, it, I, I, I don't have the graph. There's a graph that was like, their, their, I think their their metric was how long it takes. If you have seven, if you have 800 VLANs on a host, how long does it take to create the 800 and first VLAN? And on like Zen Server 602 and prior, it was like three hours, four hours or something. And keep in mind that was for one VLAN. That's, that's VLAN 801. So for VLAN 800, it's also three hours, 799, three hours, all the way down. And then you know eventually you get down to like VLAN three or four, and it's only like three seconds, right? It's just like exponential growth. Uh, so, but with Zen Server 6.1, it's pretty much flat. It's like three seconds, four seconds to create that 800 first VLAN. And uh, so CloudSec, we, we figured that out a long time ago. Actually, before I'm even hired, they knew about this scalability problem. And they actually, there's, CloudSec, there's a script that CloudSec will run periodically to kind of clean up those VLANs. But, you know, you can only do so much, basically. Like if there's, like if the VLAN is not in use, basically, then you can just delete it. and then it'll get created dynamically later on if it's needed. And if it's not needed, then you know, it won't be a problem. So any, any other questions? That's a good question. Anything next? OK, I'm going to go next. So open vSwitch is the next uh, category, I guess, of uh, top 10 issues. And so you know, it's the default 
on Zen server, I think since 6.0.2, and, and default in XCP, of course. I don't know what the version. I think XCP 1.5 is equivalent to Zen Server 602. And obviously, newer versions will be default. And so it's great as long as it works. And then when it doesn't work, you get all kinds of weird, weird problems, basically. Uh, and so, you know, VMware bought Nicira, which, which you know, made Open vSwitch. So we'll see what happens there. Like if, if, if Open vSwitch gets better on Zen Server or gets worse, I don't know. Hopefully, it gets better, right? Now that there's like a big uh, corporation behind Open vSwitch, besides just the, the Nicera startup, um, so usually the problems with this is just plain and simple weirdness. You just get these problems that just have defy explanation. It's it's really hard to troubleshoot sometimes actually. Um, basically, like some traffic is slow or some tra traffic is dropped, and like it's random. Or, you know, it's like you can ping and it's a stage, but then HTTPS doesn't work. And even like on the same host, you know, so it's not even going through your network, it's not even a firewall. Or you like ruled out everything else and you still can't SSH. Or you can SSH, but then there's like a 30 second delay. You know, it, it's, really, uh, it's really problematic to troubleshoot, but it, it's not too common. I mean, Open vSwitch definitely improved in the last. Uh, you know, a few years, so it's 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 not too bad anymore. It's just when you when you have the problem, you have this face palm moment. You're like, oh man, I don't want. But. Yeah, because the solution to troubleshoot is to change bridge mode, change the bridge mode, disable open v switch, and it all works. <laughs> that's 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 the thing. And then you change back to open v switch, and then it's broken again. So I mean that that's that that's kind of the confirmation. I mean maybe there's something else that's like a coincidence somehow, but then you know, but then you know Zen server developers acknowledge that it's a problem. So like there's a lot of patches. That so that that's the solution. You know make sure to install patches for your Zen server or your XCP because there's uh, Open vSwitch patches that will fix it, right? And also like drivers, some like Open vSwitch might not like some drivers. So make sure you patch your hypervisors and you patch the, the drivers because uh, you know there's just weirdness. I mean, I'm not trying to pick on Open vSwitch. It's just because it it's usually works, right? Especially now. I mean, it, it's the default in Zen server. They wouldn't have made it default if they uh, weren't confident in the quality of it. And it's very high quality. Has tons of features and really good. It's just that occasionally you'll uh, get into Open vSwitch uh, doing something crazy, right? Uh, and so, yeah, but solutions, you know, upgrade your, uh, you know, patch your Zen server, patch the drivers, um, upgrade the Zen server version. Like if you're on Zen server 5.6 or something and using Open vSwitch for some reason, then it's probably not a good idea. And it would be a good idea to upgrade to at least 602. And, you know, to take drastic measures would be to don't use Zen server. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're v if your server is really just don't like Open vSwitch for some reason, then you know, change the KVM, I guess. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I guess maybe. I guess the, the top ten issues are not like in the order of uh, common commonness, I guess. So, so I mean, the, the VLAN problems are more common, and then yeah, sometimes you get these uh, Open vSwitch doing something crazy. Uh, any questions? Okay. All right, uh, security groups. Basically, uh, symptoms of security groups are, you know, VM. So yeah, if you're familiar with CloudStack, the security groups are basically ho or hypervisor level uh, of traffic, ha traffic blocking basically, or traffic allowing or blocking traffic at a hypervisor level for the VMs. So yeah, so you, the symptoms will be, you know, some traffic's not getting through to VMs, or uh, yeah, basically some traffic's getting blocked or some is getting allowed. That shouldn't, right? So yeah, I mean the solutions, you know, with KVM, you know, normally it's pretty good. I haven't seen too many security group problems on KVM. With Zen Server uh, or XCP, uh, disable Open vSwitch. You know, you might be open using Open vSwitch and it's not supported right now to use Open vSwitch with security groups. And then also, if you're using uh, Zen Server 6.0.2 or earlier, you need to make sure to uh, uh, install the, the CSP, the Cloud Supplemental Pack. 
because it's just uh, it's mandatory to use the uh, security groups. And then the, the CSP is integrated into Zen Server and XCP 6.1, so then it's not a problem. And if you're using vSphere and wondering why your security group's not working, then it just doesn't work. Nope. Nope, you can't use security groups. Um, so troubleshooting, you know, just you try to find out basically what's being blocked or what's being allowed that's not supposed to be, and then you check uh, the, the IP tables and the EB tables rules on the hypervisor and try to correlate, you know, why something's getting blocked and why something be al being allowed that's not, not supposed to be happening, right? Um, another thing, um, make sure, yeah, right, if you're using uh, the CSP, if it's in, if you're if it's, if using the older Zen servers and XCP, that uh, that uh, if you're using the older Zen server, right, right? Oh my gosh! All right. So yeah, if you're using the older CSP, then then yeah, make sure to be uh, uh, if you install any Zen server patches, then uh, yeah, you need to make sure it's uh, uh, the CSP is still installed because the patch might blow away CSP. And then you can try migrating VMs around to, to other hosts, because maybe the security group's working on one host and not working on another. Another thing, don't do any like optimization scripts on your Zen server, because we've seen people run their script, and this is our script to like optimize things, and you know it, run, it works fine on our you know standalone Linux servers, but then our Zen server blows up when we run it. You know, don't do that. You know, Zen server is it's Linux, but it's more of like appliance, so you don't want to do that. So host connectivity, uh, yeah, so the host connectivity would be like hypervisors, the ho connectivity among hypervisors, system VMs, secondary storage. Uh, you know, with secondary storage like this, alert status is meaningless, it's normal. So yes, can you believe it, right? So yeah, I mean, the symptoms would be like problems. You see some kind of errors, like HA errors or connectivity errors in the uh, managed server dialog. So that'll be a problem. Um, yeah, and basically, I don't know, there's not, there's not that much to this slide. I mean, I could go into great detail about the connectivity requirements, but it's pretty much in the documentation. And basically, the, the connectivity is the, the requirements vary by the uh, hypervisor, too. So, you know, just, just be aware that, like, if you, if you checked, uh, if you set up connectivity for, like, Zen server, then it might be different for the uh, vSphere, right? So uh, physical networks in cloud stack, basically you should check the documentation. But the, the, here's a hint, physical networks, it's not actually physical, but you, know, you can think of it as physical, but not necessarily. And basically it's configured with these traffic labels. And here's a screenshot, it's under, under the physical network. And you can basically specify the traffic types with the traffic labels. And one of the common problems with this is people want to use the uh, uh, especially on vSphere, for some reason, they, they seem to like to use their management traffic on a VLAN. So, yeah, uh, you can actually do that with VMware with traffic label. But if you don't configure a traffic label, it's just not going to work at all with, the, with that configuration. And I think it doesn't work at all on other hypervisors. You can't use management traffic on, uh, definitely on Zen server. Maybe on KVM you can do that, but probably, probably not. So, concept proxy VM, uh, this is a common problem. You know, you want to basically you need to check two types of connectivity to console proxy VM uh, from the management server, or from the console proxy to VM to the management server, and from the console proxy VM to the end users. So basically, they're running a web browser connecting directly to your console proxy VM, and so if they can't reach it, then it doesn't work. Um, uses uh, public IPs in the public IP range from CloudStack, so you configure the public IPs, and uh, you know those have to be accessible. To the, to the end users. And then for the, for the management network, it uses the private or the management traffic. And you know, might, might see this real host IP in your browser when you're connecting. Well, that's actually a real domain that, I don't know who owns it now, but Citrix owns it, used, used to own it, and maybe donate to Apache, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, it's not like a dummy domain, it's actually we're running it so that you can use SSL Right. Basically, we have uh, the concept proxy VM ships with a wildcard SSL cert, so you can get to you know this abcd.realhostip.com and have an SSL you know secured connect connection. It's kind of like not that secure because uh, we're shipping the product with the private key, so you probably want to change it. Uh, 
But I mean, it, it's just there. To, so as an example, for, first to have an example and to not get uh, uh, certificate errors. You know, it's like a really bad user experience, right? You install a product, go to the console, and then bam, this crazy certificate error, right? Well, you know, that's why, we, that's why it's like that. And anytime there's a problem with console proxy VM, you just destroy it. <laughs> and then it'll be recreated, right? Yeah. So templates will be the common problem, uh, very common with the problem with templates, especially Linux templates. You know, the device names on Linux, it's just, you know, you created your template and then you deploy a new VM from it. And now it's not using the same network name, right? It's using ETH1. Or then maybe something really crazy like the new, the new UDEV, right? It's something indecipherable, indec right? It's something, I mean, it's supposed to be better, but then it's more confusing. Yeah, but like, yeah, especially with templates though, with the, basically there's like on RHEL 6.0, they have the UDEV rules. So if you create a VM, it will per save a persistent like MAC address to the network name. So like ETH0 is reserved for this MAC. So you wanna clear those UDEV rules. Um, and then other tips besides that, like SSH keys, you know, you create a template with the same SSH keys and they're all the same private keys on all of them. You know, it's not good. Um, The thing is, it's not, it's not like specific to CloudStack, it's just cloning Linux in general. I mean, if you just do like a, you know, I don't know, like a, just a, like a DD image of, a, of, a, of any Linux VM and you know, deploy somewhere else with a different MAC address, then it's gonna have this problem with ETH1. ETH0 is using the old MAC, so yeah. Um, I don't know if we have a lot of knowledge, we might have a knowledge base, but you can find like on forums and mailing lists. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's hard. I mean, for, for the CentOS, it's very easy. There's a UDEV 70 persistentnet rules, but then, you know, it might not work. Uh, I, think, I think I'm pretty close. Yeah, basically, it almost it. So, password reset feature. Um, Basically, the password reset problems, uh, right, right yeah, there's two, two, two problems with password resets. The main problem is the reset script just doesn't work for some reason. And uh, the reason is that normally it's using, uh, you're trying to use it on like a distribution that doesn't, it's not, it wasn't written for. And the script checks for the uh, DHCP uh, lease, right? So if it can't find the DHCP release, then it just fails. Uh, basically, the password reset is handled by the virtual router, which you know you might know that is the the, the DHCP server. So yeah, so the, the the script that we ship for resetting the password will basically uh, find the DHCP server and use that to try to reset the password. And so like if you're using some distribution that it uh, has a different path for the lease, then it just won't find it. Or if you're using something besides DH client, then it's not going to work probably. Uh, it's really easy to modify. It's just a bash script, so you can modify it. I, I wrote one for pump uh, uh, for various reasons. Um, and the other problem with the password reset is the actual daemon is broken. Uh, so it's actually running on a virtual router. So you can log on the virtual router and check a look. If, it's, if you see a, if a, I think the process is SoCat. Look for SoCat on 8080. And uh, you know, make sure it's running. If it's not running, then you know, do the same thing with uh, destroying it, right? Uh, you can destroy the uh, virtual router and recreate it, and that's usually fix it. Or just stopping and starting it, usually fixing it. And there's a script server password, right? And then, okay, last one, user net metadata. It's kind of the same, uh, similar concept as the password we set script. We have the uh, user and metadata. It's uh, just running on a virtual router, except it's using Apache. Uh, Apache web server. So the, there's this, just files in var log, uh, var www.html, and there should be files there. It, the, 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 uh, the user and metadata, is just, it's just files served by a web server. 
So I mean, um, you can look for the files there and make sure they're there. If they're not there, you can start, stop, do these destroy, recreate, virtual router, uh, and you know, find if if none of the, if, if these things don't don't work, usually will that usually will solve it because the the, the user, user and metadata is programmed on a virtual router when uh, when the VM starts or when the uh, the virtual router starts. So that's usually you should fix it. And if it doesn't fix it for some reason, you can check management server log and find the error, probably. So I guess actually we're just out of time. So uh, if there's any questions, uh, maybe we can do it after. Or, or do you want do we wrap it up now, or do you want me to, I can answer questions for a few minutes? Yeah, OK, so you have a question? No? Yeah, yeah. Uh, problems, especially with like uh, Zen server with SLB, it will like change the port every ten, every ten seconds, <laughs> move the VMs around like crazy. So that's you know that's a problem, definitely a problem. That's why I like active passive it doesn't doesn't switch too much. And then there's the new LACP support, so that's cool. That should help resolve that because uh, the switches the program for L LACP and not really able to handle the SLB very well. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, well then, thanks. Um, have a good lunch, and if uh, anybody is coming, I have another session after lunch about uh, troubleshooting the management server dialogue, so hope to see you guys. Thank you. Thanks.